imagine graphing x versus t, and under it v versus t, and under it a versus t. We're going to do this in a number of scenarios. So the time axes are synced up. That's why I put one directly above the other. The x graph has locations on the vertical axis, like home and school and whatever. Those are places. This is time. As time passes, we're going to move to the right on all the graphs. So simplest case, say you're a couch potato. Uh, you stay at home. You do nothing. Then as time passes, your x does not change. What's your velocity? Well, your velocity would be zero the whole time. What's your acceleration? Your acceleration would be zero the whole time. Right? The x didn't have to be zero for these other two to be zero. It just has to be constant. So when one of these is constant, the one under it is zero. So if x is constant, b is zero. If v is constant, a is zero. These are in specific order, x, then v, then a. You're at home, then you leave and go to school, then you stay at school. So what's your velocity look like? You were sitting at home, so you had no velocity. After arrival, you have no velocity. But in between here, you had a positive velocity. You were moving your way from home to school. And so this graph is like almost vertical. You know, in the real life, it's not instantaneous. There's a couple seconds in there where you pick up speed. Um, so it's mostly vertical, and that is your velocity versus time graph. So now, what's your acceleration? Acceleration only happens when you change velocity. The velocity is really boring most of the time. There's only two spots where the velocity even changes, here and here. So what happens then? Well, we went from zero to a positive very quickly, like from zero meters per second to two meters per second, say, very suddenly. And so there was this big blip that was also very narrow. You had a little pulse of acceleration there. Uh, and then the only other thing that happened was you stopped, which means you had a negative pulse, the same area under it. So that's like the second simplest case. Now, suppose we are at school and we decide to go home. So we're at school, and then say at this point we decide to walk home. And we're almost home and we realize that we forgot something and we need it, so we hurry back for it. So we go like this, back to the school. And then we go back to walking home. What does this look like for velocity? Well, the velocity was nothing until this point in time. And then we acquired a negative velocity, a small negative velocity, because we're walking home. And then at this point in time, we suddenly turned around and had a large positive velocity. And we kept that up for a short time. Then we switched back to our negative low velocity and went back to walking home. The acceleration graph, we would have a blip here, which is negative, small negative blip, and then nothing, and then a big positive blip, and then an equally big negative blip. And I didn't show us arriving home, so there's not a blip for that yet. So the acceleration often just has these little blips if the vo velocity is boring, if it's constant, and then it's a different constant, and then it's a different constant. OK, let's have a non-zero acceleration. Let's say that you started from rest at the origin uh, and decided to start accelerating in one direction. Like you're gradually going faster and faster and faster. Like you're going for a jog and you're getting more and more excited. If you started from the origin, uh, you would be gradually going faster and faster and faster. Your x graph would look like that. It'd look like a parabola. In the ca in the case of constant acceleration, what's going on with your velocity is it's growing linearly, and your acceleration seems to be a steady positive constant, at least until you're hitting your top speed. What would happen if you hit your top speed? When you do that, that means effectively that this would straighten out because you wouldn't be able to go any faster. The slope is how fast you're going. The slope on the x is the v. The slope of the v is the a. So what would happen there is we would max out 
our velocity. And if we maxed out our velocity, that means our acceleration fell off to zero. So that's a case of gradually going faster and faster until you hit top speed. Now let's do a classic example. A bus leaves a bus stop, picks up speed, cruises for a while, and then slows down at the next stop and stops. What do these graphs look like? Probably the easiest one to imagine is the velocity. You've got the bus is stopped, then it pulls away from the curb going faster and faster, hits its cruising speed, stays there for a while, then it's time to slow down to stop at the next stop, so velocity decreases back down to zero, and then you're stopped at the stop. What's the acceleration graph look like for that? Well, you've got no acceleration, and then when this is slope, straight slope, this is constant. So the acceleration climbs up to a specific amount. That's the amount he's hitting the gas. And then goes back to zero when we're hitting cruising speed. And then when he hits the brakes, he's going to have a negative constant acceleration during the slowdown, and then go back to zero acceleration when the bus is stopped. Finally, we're kind of working backwards here, what does x look like, x versus t? Well, uh, suppose here is essentially stop number one. We're stopped at the bus stop, so we start out like that. Then the velocity starts picking up, which means we start doing this. We start having a parabola curving upward. But we get to this point, and now uh, we're not curving anymore because the velocity's flattened out. So now we just go straight until this time. At this stage, it's time to slow down and stop. So we're going gradually less and less until we arrive there, and then we're stopped at that stop. So what we have here to here is a parabola, and here to here is a parabola, and they're connected by straight lines. And so this location here would be stop number two. So that's the bus going from one stop to another example. One more. I take something, I toss it into the air, I catch it. How many accelerations was that? Like a lot of people get confused. What acceleration is there and is it positive or negative? There's five accelerations. Before I do anything, the acceleration is zero. While I am shoving it, I'm giving it a big positive acceleration for a short time. There's a big positive blip. As soon as it leaves my hand, the only thing acting on it is gravity. So it starts accelerating downward. Remember, it can be rising and accelerating downward. That just means it's slowing down. So it's rising slower and slower, then is falling faster and faster. The entire time, the acceleration is negative 9.8. Then it hits my hand, and suddenly there's a big positive acceleration again because I'm stopping it. I'm bringing it from big negative to zero abruptly. That's a big positive change. And then finally, there's zero acceleration where it's sitting in my hand again. So let's sketch that out. We're going to give it a brief sudden shove, and then it's going to do that. And then we're going to do a brief catch, and then it's like that. Velocity-wise, the velocity was zero. Then we gave it this really big boost up to a positive value, the launch speed, at which point it immediately started going down and in fact crossed zero when there was zero velocity at the top. We get to about here, there is abruptly a big positive acceleration because the velocity is coming back up to zero because I'm catching it and making it stop. So the acceleration, as I said, was zero, then a big positive blip, then it was a steady negative 9.8 for the entire rise and fall. And then with the catch, there was another big positive blip, and then zero.